Okay. According to my clock here, it is 6.05. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to welcome everybody to the public workshop for the Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Thank you so much uh, for giving us a little bit of your evening um, to learn a little bit more about what we're doing um, with transportation planning here um, in the town of Holly Springs. Uh, we're very excited to uh, be starting this process and have this chance to gather your feedback and hear a little bit from you all uh, this evening. So um, just to kind of kick things off, I want to introduce myself. I'm Allison Fluitt. I'm with Kimley Horn and Associates. So we are the consultant team that is assisting the town of Holly Springs in the development of this comprehensive transportation plan. And I'm joined by my partners, Christina Whitfield, Samantha Borges, and Helen Shuda uh, from the consultant side this evening. Um, I'm also joined this evening by Sean Ryan and Emily Tampati from the town. Uh, they are partners uh, from the town staff side that are assisting us uh, working through the development of the comprehensive transportation plan. Um, so we are all on the phone tonight to work through um, a couple of different things. I'll just go through a brief agenda of what we're going to be covering this evening. We'll start with a, a brief presentation, a narrated presentation that gives you a little bit more information about what the plan is, some of the background um, that we're looking at as we start to think about the recommendations and some of the needs uh, that the town has from a transportation perspective. Um, and then after that presentation, we'll actually have an interactive exercise using some online polling, um, which you can do either with your computer or your phone. Um, so we'll go through a little bit of that, uh, that exercise just to hear some feedback directly from you all. Um, if you come to the meeting tonight with specific things that you want to discuss, questions that you want to ask, we absolutely have time for that as well. Um, following that interactive polling component, um, we'll be staying on um, for the entire two hours of this from six to eight. Um, and so we welcome everybody um, following the conclusion of kind of the facilitated portion of the workshop to stay on with us. If you want to discuss certain things that are on your mind, tell us more about some of the feedback that you offered during the polling session. We'd absolutely like to have that discussion with you. So um, you see a couple of the, the ground rules for our virtual meeting format here this evening. Um, but just as a quick reminder, um, we are also happy to answer questions and have discussion as we go along. Um, if something provokes a thought, um, and you want to kind of talk it through with us at the time. Um, there's a raise hand feature. Um, if you want to actually talk with us, um, make sure to just praise, press that raise hand feature and we can un unmute you so that you can chime in. Um, or you can always use the chat box to enter any questions that you have um, at any point during the meeting. Um, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and start our presentation. Thank you for your interest in the Holly Springs Comprehensive Transportation Plan. In this presentation, we will talk through the basics of the Comprehensive Transportation Plan, including an overview of what the plan is, a look into the project schedule, some information about what we found in our existing conditions analysis, how to get involved and have your voice be heard throughout this process, and finally, a preview of our next steps for the upcoming months. To get started, we have to first understand what a Comprehensive Transportation Plan, or CTP, will do for Holly Springs. The Comprehensive Transportation Plan will help to establish a vision for transportation in Holly Springs. This includes driving, walking, biking, and taking public transportation. This plan will identify the needs and deficiencies in the transportation system, such as congestion, safety and connectivity concerns, and then identify recommendations, strategies, and projects to address these needs. The plan will also include an action plan for implementation that identifies projects to be completed in the near term, midterm, and long term. 
Finally, the CTP will identify potential funding sources in order to ensure the vision established in this plan can become a reality. The CTP development will be about a year-long process broken up into four main stages. We are currently in the first stage of this process where we collect data to analyze the existing conditions and meet with town council, the steering committee, various stakeholders, and the public to establish a vision and project goals. The next phase of the plan will begin in March. In this phase, we will assess multimodal conditions and begin formulating recommendations. Starting in late summer, we'll begin to prioritize the recommended projects, develop cost estimates, and draft the final report. Finally, this plan will be brought to the Town Council for adoption in early 2022. During the data collection phase, we completed our existing conditions analysis. We'd like to share some key background and observations. Holly Springs is one of the core communities that make up southwestern Wake County. It also shares a boundary with the towns of Apex, Cary, and Fuquay Varina. In the existing conditions analysis, we first established a study area that extends past the Holly Springs town boundary and encompasses Holly Springs urban service area, bordering Chatham and Harnett counties. This is because we know that the impacts of traffic and travel are not restricted to town limits, and we want to have as much context as we can when looking to improve the transportation system, while also responsibly planning to account for future growth. Taking a look at some of the demographic data, we can see that as of 2019, the population of Holly Springs was estimated to be over 36,000. This is up from 24,000 in 2010. This is a 47% increase in nearly 10 years. While this population data comes from the U.S. Census Bureau, the town estimates that we actually have closer to 40,000 people living in Holly Springs. It's important to note this growth because the last CTP was completed in 2011, a decade ago. We can see that Holly Springs has grown steadily since the last CTP was adopted, and we need to update this plan to keep up with the needs of a flourishing community. Next, we consider travel mode split and commuter flow. The data can also tell us a little bit about how people are getting around. We can see that in 2019, almost 80% of Holly Springs residents drove alone on their daily commute. We can also see the distribution of commuters traveling to, within, and away from town in their daily commute, showing us that the majority of Holly Springs residents work elsewhere in the region. Maps on this slide help further illustrate the commuter travel patterns. Here we can see that the majority of people who work in Holly Springs either live in town or in the neighboring towns. We also see hotspots for where Holly Springs residents are traveling for work. These destinations include Central Raleigh, Apex, Fuquay Varina, RTP, and Durham, just to name a few. People are traveling, and it's important to, that we understand these travel patterns as we look into developing recommendations. While understanding commuting patterns is necessary for identifying these needs for our plan, we have to also consider how residents of Holly Springs travel within the town. Holly Springs is a growing community where people work, go to school, run errands, shop, dine, and recreate. This plan will develop recommendations that serve the town's community by improving the flow of traffic and connectivity in town. This project has a community-driven planning process. We need to hear from you what your priorities for transportation in Holly Springs are, be they connectivity, walkability, safety, or otherwise. Your input will influence the recommendations proposed in this plan, which will shape transportation in Holly Springs for decades to come. This plan can't succeed without the voices of Holly Springs residents, workers, businesses, and organizations involved. This plan is a collaborative effort across many agencies and stakeholders, including the Holly Springs Town Council and Planning Board, Holly Springs residents and advocacy group representatives, emergency service workers, business owners, and educators, 
and agency partners such as the North Carolina Department of Transportation, Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, and Go Triangle. We hope that you'll stay involved in this process throughout the CTP development. This planning process includes three engagement phases spanning over the year-long timeline. Phase one runs from November of last year to the end of January 2021. This phase aims to raise awareness about the CTP, identify transportation needs, and develop our goals, vision, and priorities. Phase two begins in February and will end in July. This phase will analyze multimodal components and identify draft recommendations. The third and final phase will begin in August and end in early 2022. This phase will ask for public buy-in on refined recommendations, develop prioritization methodology, and undergo the adoption process. Your involvement in all of these phases is crucial to the success of this plan. The best way to stay involved and up-to-date on the CTP is to visit the project webpage at www.hollyspringsnc.gov forward slash CTP. This webpage includes a project overview and schedule and has contact information if you have any questions or comments about the project. This webpage will also be updated frequently throughout this process with planned documents and announcements about engagement opportunities. The project webpage will also house a newsletter that will be released every other month. This newsletter will share project progress, announcements and upcoming events, and briefly summarize findings and reports along the way. If you know someone with limited internet access, feel free to share this newsletter with them. We want to make sure we allow everyone to stay informed on this process. Hard copies of this newsletter will also be available at Town Hall. The first public survey for this project is open for you to take. We encourage you to take this survey to provide your feedback on transportation in Holly Springs today and to voice your vision for the transportation network in the future. Please also share this survey with your friends and family to spread the word before it closes on February 1st. You can access the survey at publicinput.com forward slash Holly Springs CTP or by scanning the QR code in this presentation. If you've already missed the deadline, don't worry. We'll have more engagement opportunities along the way. As we wrap up January, we're looking ahead to the next phase of this plan. In the coming months, we'll complete phase one engagement and begin moving into phase two. Finalize our vision and goals for the plan and then we'll initiate project recommendations development. Thank you for your interest and participation in the Comprehensive Transportation Plan. We appreciate your help in establishing a vision for transportation in Holly Springs. Awesome. So if everyone wants to go ahead and grab their phones, we're going to do a little bit of an interactive polling. Um, and as you guys are getting your phones out and we're getting this started, I'll do a quick introduction of myself. I am Christina Whitfield. I am with our consultant team. And um, like Allison mentioned, we've been um, hired by the town to help out with the update of the plan. And we're here today to walk us all through um, the various um, activities and chat with you guys hopefully afterwards if you're willing to stay around to share all of all of the good things you want to share with us about transportation in town. So for those of you who are at your computer or for those of you who want to use your smartphone, if you'll go to www.minty.com and use the code here at the top of your screen, 52483281, and um, you should be prompted to see the, the title slide that just says interactive polling. And while everyone's getting joined up, just a couple of reminders. Um, Allison's already mentioned this, but we've had a few folks join us a little late, so I want to make sure that everyone hears it and has the opportunity to weigh in. As we're going through the, the presentation and the interactive polling, feel free to type your questions into the chat window and um, somebody from the project team will grab those and we'll, we'll chat through them with the whole gang here. Um, and then alternatively, if, if you wanna use your voice and pipe in at any point, don't hesitate to raise your hand and we'll call on you. And um, we can talk through any of the items that pop up as well. So with that, let's go ahead and go to our first one. 
So as we start to think about transportation in Holly Springs, one of the things we like to start with from a high level is just really starting to understand what what you guys as residents, as those folks who work and live and recreate in the town, see as the biggest transportation issue or concern within the town. So if, if you're in our, our little interactive polling platform, you should be able to type in one word that describes the biggest transportation issue facing the town today. We'll get to see everyone's responses chime in live here. So kind of fun to see what, what everyone thinks collectively. Um, this is set up as um, what's considered a word cloud. So the bigger the word, the more common that response is. And if you are just joining us, um, just go follow the instructions at the top of the screen. We're doing a polling exercise. It's menti.com and there's just a seven digit code um, up there and you can go ahead and start participating in the polling. Awesome, looks like we've got quite a few folks chiming in. So I'm seeing some, some repetitiveness here with congestion and traffic, but I'm also seeing some, some words like accessibility and connectivity in a couple of different ways that I think is something really important that we'll, we'll be needing to consider as we move forward after this kind of initial phase of understanding our um, existing state and starting to think about drafting our recommendations. We'll give it about 10 more seconds for anyone who wants to get in a, a last word here. See safety popping up, um, some interest around the, the new 540 connection. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to our next one. So staying in that same vein of high level thought, when we think about transportation in Holly Springs, um, when, when you think about your vision for the future of the transportation system in Holly Springs, what is the one word that comes to mind um, that you would use to describe that vision, what you want it to be um, someday in the future? And for anyone who just joined us, if you um, want to participate in our active polling, um, you can just follow the instructions on the top of the screen that say to go to www.menti.com and use the code 52483321. Awesome. So when we, when we think about this relative to the previous one where we think about our biggest issue, there was a little bit of that discussion about the lack of connectivity between neighborhoods. And here when we see people's vision, we're really starting to see the, the accessibility and the connectedness of the transportation system. Um, I like seeing the word efficient in there as an engineer. Um, and then stuff like multimodal mobility options, biking, those will all go hand in hand and all something. All of those are items that we will be looking at throughout this planning process. Give everyone just about five to 10 more seconds um, to get your final thoughts in for those who have just joined us. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead to our next one. So one more high level one before we start getting into the weeds of some particular areas. Um, when we think one word to represent your goal for the comprehensive transportation plan or your goal for transportation, um, what would that goal be? What is the one thing you want to achieve? Seeing some really good thoughts here. Both innovative and implementable are, are awesome considerations and bike paths. We're seeing a, a big drive for that, especially in this pandemic era that we're all living in when people are forced outside a little bit more. I think everyone's seen that our greenways are very, very active and busy now. Proactive, that's always a good one to think about when we're thinking about planning for transportation. This is a plan that we'll be looking out into the future well beyond what most of us would typically think about. The aesthetic of Holly Springs, that's definitely an interesting one. That's going to be an, um, a good one to keep in mind. I think Allison alluded to this in our early presentation about the growth. And one of the things that we want to ensure through this is that those things that are innately Holly Springs remain um, as, as the town continues to grow. Awesome, we'll give it about five to 10 more seconds. Looks like we've got almost everyone in. Um, 
All righty, we will go ahead and move on. So as we start to think about the CTP and what goals we want it to achieve, we're in a really good starting point in the fact that the town updated their CTP in 2011 and that plan had a set of goals in it. Um, while we're not just going to take those verbatim and regurgitate them as part of this because a lot has changed in the last decade, we do want to start using those goals to do to help drive the discussion today. So um, there's about eight of them. And as we go through, we're going to ask you guys to provide feedback about very specific areas that, and in the case of what's on the screen, when we start thinking about safety, we'll start with this one because it's nice and easy. Everyone has that, that spot that they just feel really unsafe crossing. They feel really unsafe when they're at that intersection. Um, you guys are gonna have the opportunity to type in multiple responses. Um, for any of those of you who have been able to join us in in-person meetings back, um, Pre-pandemic, we would all be gathered around a giant table. You guys would have your magic markers and sticky notes, and we would be marking all over maps of the town. So um, put in your mental map of Holly Springs, and as we start talking through these goals, try to think about very specific locations or um, issues and concerns around town. So first goal um, from the previous CTP is safety. Um, this is increasing the safety of the transportation system for all users, those people who are in a, an automobile, those people on bike, those people walking, the people pushing the stroller up the sidewalk, anyone who is using our transportation system, ensuring that they have a safe way to do so. So as you guys think about safety in the town of Holly Springs, um, just, just shoot out some of those places where you do see safety issues or concerns that will be important for us as a project team to look into as we begin our recommendations development. Pedestrian crossings on NC55. This has been a, a very interesting one that has come up in almost every meeting that we've had since the start of this plan in November. So, crossing and I'll just 55. add that are just joining and we've had a couple of folks that are that are just joining us. Um, we are doing interactive polling and you can go to the web address up at the top of the screen, www.menti.com, and just type in the seven digit code 52483211. And uh, we're weighing in on the goal statements from the previous comprehensive transportation plan. Just get a little bit more insight on what's on your mind. Seeing some, some thoughts about very particular intersections, Holly Springs Road and Sunset Lake Road coming up, um, sidewalks by 55 towards the center of town along Main Street. Um, looks like Sunset Lake is a little bit of a, a hot discussion item in a couple of different locations. Looks like turning onto Stevenson Road as well as the area between Holly Springs Road and 55. Bicycle and pedestrian safety is a really big topic. Looks like we're seeing a little bit of stuff come through about the Wood Creek neighborhood. Some interest in public transportation and increasing the safety of such. You guys are awesome. These are exactly what we need to come through. <laughs> All right, just give it a few more seconds. Looks like we've had everyone respond. Give everyone about five to 10 more seconds to type in some of their, their last thoughts here. Avent Ferry going west out of the high school. A lot of pedestrians walk on that road and there is no sidewalks. It's a very, very good point to bring up, a location that has definitely came up in a few other discussions we've had already with town council and the planning board. So. Glad to hear that it's on other people's mind too. All right, let's go ahead and jump to our next question. Um, and I wanna 
caveat here that while we're doing the interactive polling in the meeting today, this will not be the last chance that you guys have to weigh in. If you want to use our online survey, there's actually an interactive map where you can go and draw lines and leave points of all of these locations that you didn't get to share with us tonight that are still on your mind and you can revisit it infinitely um, and just continue to share feedback as it comes to mind. So definitely want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. All right, um, I see that we've had a couple of people join us since the last question, so just to, to reiterate, for those of you that are joining us, if you don't mind, go to www.menti.com um, and use the seven digit code at the top of the screen here. It is 5248321, and you can join in on our interactive polling session. So revisiting that previous CTP again, one of the other goal areas was security of the transportation system and disaster response and recovery. Um, I think another way to think about this is in terms of those folks that are perhaps emergency responders who need to be able to safely get around the system should an incident happen um, or should an incident happen that they're not blocked off and incapable of getting around. So as we think about increasing the security of our transportation network in Holly Springs, what are some of those things that come to mind? Where are areas that give you guys concern or give you pause that, that we should know about? This one's a little bit trickier. I promise they're not all this, this difficult. Better connectivity between our neighborhoods. That's really important because that connectivity allows in the, in the case of an accident or any other um, incident that may happen, the, the option for alternative routes around Holly Springs Road. Um, the Sharon Harris evacuation routes, definitely something that you guys have, you guys are in a unique position with that most other towns don't have to think about. The connection between Bass Lake and the 55 bypass, also a really, really important area to consider. I think we had a new person join. Um, just a reminder to look at the instructions up at the top of the slide. Um, we're doing an interactive polling exercise, so feel free to join in. Seeing some, some conversation about 55 between Walmart and the movie theater and how it's frequently congested. Um, just general gridlocks on 55 when there is a, an incident or an accident on that road. Give everyone about 10 to 15 more seconds to get any thoughts you have in on this one. Um, like I said, this one's, this one's probably the harder one to conceptualize. So. There's plenty of other opportunities to weigh in that will trigger a lot more thoughts and considerations for, for you guys. Middle Creek on Holly Springs Road during rain events. That's a, that's a really interesting one. I think with some of the, the hurricanes and things that have came in, we've definitely all seen some, some extreme flooding, and then there's definitely going to be those low-lying places that we see during an average rain event. Definitely something to be aware of. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to our next one. So revisiting that, that previous CTP, one of the, the goal areas that was established as part of that process was the goal of accessibility. So increasing the accessibility and mobility for freight and then ensuring affordable transportation options for all users. So, so when we think about accessibility in 2021, this may, may look a little different than what it did in 2011. So as, as you guys think about this, let, let's think through areas where we feel like the accessibility of the system is limited or greater accessibility would be a, a great value add for all modes, not just, you know, our auto traffic. Really excited about the ex responses that we've been getting so far. You guys are providing some really great context for us to look into. In-town transit access. I, I get excited to see that. Um, I know some of you guys may be aware, but Wake County has a new transit sales tax that actually makes in-town transit a lot more of a, a viable option for Holly Springs than it has been in the past. And that's definitely something that we'll be exploring as part of the CTP and that the town will have the option to explore in much greater detail a, a little bit later on. 
people with disabilities and those sidewalk gaps on our major thoroughfares, those are all really important considerations. The town is currently looking at their ADA system and those locations where there is missing infrastructure or opportunities for improvement um, and something that we'll be pulling in and referencing as a part of this planning effort as well. The connections to Cary and Apex um, is also another really important consideration if we think back to those maps that Allison shared with us about where people are going in and around town. Definitely something to that we see that there's a lot of kind of cross town traffic for for you guys going to Apex and Cary and them coming to visit Holly Springs, which is really great for things like our economic development and some of those recreational elements. Walking and biking, absolutely. Give everyone about 15 more seconds. For those of you who are joining in a little late, um, there is a link to minty.com at the top of the screen. Type it into your phone, onto your computer, and use the seven digit code and join along with us for our interactive polling. Some interest in accommodating traffic a little bit better, um, and then the, the property around the future 540 interchange at Holly Springs and Kildare. Definitely something that's going to be new and will be an area to look into. Biking into town. Um, I think that's something that we've heard reiterated by our council and our planning board members a lot, both biking and walking into kind of the village district and the town center. That's really important, thinking about how we get all of these great large neighborhoods that are just surrounding it um, to the point where they can access it without having to get in their car. Public transportation throughout the Triangle, also something really interesting. Um, the town just got the, the 305 route. Um, inconvenient timing with, with a pandemic and most folks not going to work, but you guys are slowly making your way that way with now transit access all the way to downtown Raleigh from town, which is a really awesome piece of um, access there that you guys have. All right, we'll give it about 15 more seconds and then we will move on to our next one. Give you guys a chance to get all hearts and minds clear about accessibility. Increase bike parking options. That's that's a really great one to consider. Doesn't do any good to increase our biking network when we have nowhere to put our bike at the end of our trip. All right, let's move on. So in a similar vein, but just slightly different, let's think about connectivity and what that means for the town and for our transportation system. This is really thinking about the integration of the system as a whole, some of that cross neighborhood access, whether that be via more of a, a small local street, whether that be via sidewalks, greenways, bicycle paths, and then also thinking about this in terms of our linkages to perhaps land use and how the transportation system and our development type and how we grow talk to each other. So when we think about transportation in Holly Springs, are there areas particularly that you guys feel we need to be more connected? Pedestrian connections between our neighborhoods so we can not have to hop in our cars to go visit our friends. Across 55, I think it's it's relevant in many ways. Um, I think that's one of one of the hot spots that we're going to continue to see come up throughout this process. Any other particular thoughts or interests for additional connectivity? Thinking about our main thoroughfares like Holly Springs Road, Sunset Lake, Avent Ferry, um, those being widened to accommodate, they are kind of our critical networks and links across town. More greenways. Bike and scooter rental, that's an, that's an interesting one that we haven't seen yet. Downtown to our new hospital. I saw that town council just got an update on the new hospital. That's exciting for you guys. It's gonna be a really great economic driver for the town. Easier non-auto access to our major shopping areas. Connecting greenways. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, the town is wrapping up their Parks, Recreation, and Greenways Master Plan. 
So that's something that we're going to have a really great opportunity to leverage and reference in our plan and help fill the gaps with bicycle and pedestrian connections to those greenways. The trolley service, um, this is I think one that's really fun. Um, Mayor Sears really likes the idea of calling it the Holly Trolley. We found that out in one of our conversations with him earlier this month. Options for our low speed vehicle routes. You guys do have a couple of golf cart communities, which is a really unique thing here in Wake County. All right, let's give it about 10 more seconds and we'll progress on to the next one. Seeing lots of interest in pedestrian, bike, transit, that more multimodal concept. And our pedestrian bridge over 55 near the town center. All right. Let's go ahead and jump forward. Like I said before, I'm going to reiterate it for anyone who hasn't heard it yet. I know we've had several people join um, as we've started getting going here. I, I don't want every, anyone to feel like this is your last chance to weigh in. We do have the online survey that has an interactive map. So share as much with us as you can now, as fast as you can type. And then if you feel like you missed something, hang around. We'll be around for the last hour to just kind of open discussion and chat through with folks, as well as you can use that online survey and those map features to um, place points and lines and share any other concerns or issues that you have around town with us. So revisiting those goals one more time, thinking about the efficiency of the system. This goal really is just striving to make our, our system much more efficient to handle that management and operations of the system. So um, I think everyone's probably got a couple of spots that are, are pet peeves in their mind that they can think about. But as we think about ways to make our transportation system more efficient, whether that be through making our signals talk to each other better, to using some smart technology to notify residents when there may be accidents or um, of detours, just thinking about ways that you guys would love to make the system more efficient. Um, share them with us here. Yeah, and for this question, I think that understanding a little bit more about some of those places where the network is really not functioning efficiently for, for you right now is, is going to be helpful to us to then understand which of those needs and recommendations we can come up with to help uh, start to fill that gap and create some of those enhanced efficiencies. Encouraging our traffic to stay on the primary roads and off of our secondary roads. Signals near the Huntingcut Farms Middle School Road. Holly Springs Road and all of our schools. That's, that's an interesting one. I think we've all seen a little bit of a cultural shift in um, the school buses not being used as much for a variety of reasons. The, the time that we have in our lives is really valuable. So sometimes we spend a little bit more time and relish those few extra minutes dropping our kids off. Um, but that does that does cause some efficiency problems during those peak hours and thinking about creative ways to address that. Road diets to decrease accidents and increase flow. Some really long ones. I've got to read them before I can can bring them up. <laughs> you guys are providing really great responses. The 540 off ramp to 55 and trying to get over for the U-turn to get to Old Holly to Smithfield Road is dangerous. We've definitely heard a lot about that, especially with some of the large truck traffic getting in and out of the dump in that vicinity. It's a pretty tight place to maneuver and um, try to make that, that merge. Improving our left turn timing. Driver safety programs, that's an interesting one. Holly Springs is a very family-oriented community, and, in, and by that I mean you guys have lots of young families with lots of young kids who um, may be getting behind the wheel for the first time. Um, also thinking about our safe ways for our elder population to get around. Um, we had some conversation in our meeting yesterday about the opportunity for, for some transit, particularly for, for elder commutes. So. More lighting on 55, that, that's a really interesting concept to think about. Sometimes we don't think about lighting being a way to increase the efficiency or safety of our system. 
All right, about five more seconds, and then we'll move on to the next, next category. You guys are providing us a lot of really great content. I'm excited to dive into this after this. All right, let's go ahead and jump to our next category. So something that I think everyone can kind of get behind and think about is the maintenance of our existing system. Um, really this goal in our prior CTP was to emphasize the preservation of the existing network that maximizes benefits while minimizing costs. So um, we've talked a lot about things that are, are new infrastructure or widening or um, providing new connections. Let, let's shift our mindset a little bit and think about the areas where we could improve maintenance and make the most of what we've already got on the ground today, whether that be where you hit a pothole every day and it drives you absolutely bonkers or where there are poorly maintained sidewalks or missing ADA ramps, just anything you can think about that's more of a maintenance um, portion of our existing system. So as you think about that, um, maintenance of the existing transportation, anywhere that you guys see that there's needs that we can look into as a part of this planning effort. Fast Lake Trail, inefficient signals. Reviewing our signal timing, especially on North Main and 55. It's amazing what a little bit of tweaking and changing in those signal timing cabinets can really, really do. Add more signals near our school zones. These are all really great things to look into. I think the school zone one's particularly interesting. And the CTP is an interesting opportunity. Um, as, as you all probably know, a lot of our roadways are maintained by NCDOT. Um, so even though this is a town plan, uh, this really does provide a good forum for us to have some increased communication um, with NCDOT and also with TAMPO, who is our uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization partner, um, to just help better understand what some of those needs are um, on some of those state-maintained roadways. I, I like this response about coming from New Jersey and not being able to complain about maintenance. I think that's a fun one because as those of us who live here in the South, there's it's an amazing thing how much not having plow trucks and salt on your roads makes them last so much longer. <laughs> a little conversation here. It looks like we've got quite a few Jersey folks on the phone. Adding a, a, a light at the intersection of Stevenson and Sunset Lake. Signal coordination. I think that, that's interesting that that one keeps coming up. Definitely something that we'll want to explore further with the town as we start looking at ways to maximize our existing system and some of the efficiencies like some of those other goal statements that we've talked about already tonight. All right, let's give it about 10, 15 more seconds for everyone to, to get in their final thoughts. Ample budget for maintenance, that's, that's a really interesting one and something that if you've been keeping up with the news, um, our state Department of Transportation's hit a little bit of a funding, funding pitfall. So something that I think everyone's really interested in exploring is how we better fund both our maintenance and our new infrastructure projects. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our next question. So, Thinking about this from a very different perspective than what we've talked through already, as we think about our prior CTP goals, 
and how our transportation system can protect and enhance the environment. Um, any ways that you guys can think of that um, either, you know, further protects and enhances it or promotes the conservation of energy or alternative commutes. And then ultimately, all of those things rolling into our improved quality of life in the town. So, so thinking about ways that our transportation system can be more environmentally friendly. More trails and sidewalks. Preserving our local character. Biking. Solar lights on our local roads. That's a really cool concept to think about. There's even some really cool new smart lights that, that integrate and kind of um, do a lot more than just provide lights that if, if you guys are technology nerds and you want to look into kind of a cool thing to think about. Thinking about the smell from our neighboring landfill. Connecting sidewalks to get to our greenways. I love that one. There's nothing that I hate more than having to get in my car to drive to a trailhead that's only about a mile away when I could just jump on a sidewalk and walk there. Charging stations. I think that's one that we're kind of seeing kind of as a national trend as a lot of our cars become more electric and everything shifts to more of that kind of um, that electric grid system, seeing how we can put those into parking lots and other areas. Getting fewer cars on the road. How do we get people out of their single occupancy vehicle on their daily commute? Golf cart pathways and connectivity. Electric rail, that's an exciting one. Keep the cars moving. E-bike stations, bus connections to RTP, that's an interesting one. I know we've got our bus connection to, to Raleigh, but we don't quite have a bus connection to RTP yet. And as we saw from some of those earlier maps, there's a lot of folks in the town who commute up that way. Low speed vehicle pathways. Give everyone about 10 to 15 more seconds. A bus connection app, thinking about ways that we can um, more efficiently trip plan. Sometimes there's a, a pretty easy route out there that you just don't realize because you've not seen it yet. And bike lanes. All right, let's go ahead and jump to our next question. So I think this is our final goal area and then we have a couple of different questions and we'll open up the floor for conversation. But um, something that is, you know, linked to transportation that's a, a little bit more high level and something that we don't always think about but I think is really important for the town given some of the strategic initiatives to balance the tax base a little bit between residential and commercial. Um, thinking about ways that our transportation system and those investments and decisions that we're making today and in the future can really impact economic development within the town and that economic vitality. So as you guys um, put on your thinking caps and think about ways that our transportation system can better support economic development or areas where you think that enhancements could spur or generate economic development. Attractive multimodal accommodations. I think this one's incredibly interesting. I think one of the trends we're seeing in the triangle and even nationwide is that families are looking for those areas that do have great greenway access or neighborhoods that provide that on site. Finishing 540, allowing a lot of um, opportunity there. Those interchanges tend to be a, a hot spot for folks to want to develop and um, locate. Mixed use projects, I, I love seeing that. I like seeing the thoughts of being able to park once, go grab your groceries, go grab dinner. 
increasing our sidewalk width around downtown, that, that's an incredibly smart way to think about driving that economic development. Um, when, when you can't space out, when you don't have the room to walk and you're, you're on a very narrow five to six foot sidewalk, it, it kind of limits the desire and the attractiveness of being in the downtown realm. What other thoughts and considerations do we have about supporting economic development in town? Land and Amazon distribution center. Garner might think otherwise at this point. <laughs> Beautification efforts, I love seeing that too. Um, one of the unique opportunities that, that transportation lends us is the opportunity to really think about how we create gateways and apply that more aesthetic thing to make sure that the town's maintaining their character and providing trees and plantings and shrubs and even potentially local art as part of that. Um, streetscaping, more restaurants. Always love a good place to eat. Even better if you can easily access it. Give everyone about 15 to 20 more seconds. More parks, commercial property access at Kildare and Holly Springs Road for better access to 540. All really good things to think about. All right, publicizing our connectivity to 540 and RTP, that's really smart. That's one of the things that a, a good marketing and a good communication strategy can really um, you know, help the town leverage that attractiveness um, to those, those folks that want to easily um, jump right over there. All right, and then finally, connecting our existing centers and town centers to each other and um, the Holly Springs Business Park. We've heard a lot about kind of getting that up and off the ground and really trying to provide greater access so that we can attract a lot to that. All right, let's go ahead and jump to our next question. So switching it up on you guys, a little bit of um, a different thing to think about, but all of these goals are important and all of these goals are, you know, linked in some way or another to what we're doing. But as we think about them, be a little selfish, think about what your priorities are. Um, and just because one of these ranks low doesn't mean that we're gonna throw it out and forget about it. But I do think it is helpful for us as a project team to know what, what the residents that we're, we're working to serve here really think about these goal areas and what rises to a level of importance for you all. So um, you should see on your screen a little slider bar with a bubble. Um, the low end of that being no issue, you don't care about it, it's not that big of a concern, to the, the high end being one of your biggest issues, one of the things you think we should spend a lot of our time thinking about and addressing in the plan. Seeing some early points for safety, but it's still early, just three folks in. I feel like it's a little bit of a horse race here. Connectivity coming up and catching up with safety. Accessibility and connectivity kind of neck and neck there, competing for our second place. Awesome. Safety still keeping a pretty strong lead, um, narrowing a little bit, but up front in most folks' minds. This one's a little bit easier, a little less typing, so we'll give everyone about 15 to 20 seconds to, to get your final responses in. All right, awesome guys. So with that, we are done with the interactive um, polling portion of this. I'm gonna give one more shameless plug before we open up the floor for those who wanna stay around and discuss more specifically certain elements with us and the town staff. Um, so thank you guys for your participation today. Thank you so much for hanging around through our narrated presentation and our interactive polling. All of these materials will be posted on the town's website, um, that Holly Springs CTP website. So if you have friends and family who were unable to join us tonight, um, 
feel free to shoot it their way. Also direct them to the public survey. We've already had a little over 600 responses on that, which is phenomenal. But um, the more feedback we get, the better. And then um, if you guys haven't already taken the survey, please feel free to do so. Like I said, any of those areas that we talked about today, you're gonna have a much bigger opportunity to, to get creative and um, draw some lines on a map, drop some points and share your thoughts with us. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and the project team is gonna be around for um, open house discussion and Q&A. I'll just chime into what Christina said. Uh, thank you again, everybody, um, for spending a portion of your evening with us. Um, the feedback that we've gotten this evening helps us to refine the goals that we've heard so that they're a little more appropriate for our new CCP and also carry forward some of the specific thoughts that y'all had into needs and recommendations development. Um, so as Christina said, um, if you've already offered all the feedback that you had on your mind, um, you can feel free to log off at this point in time. Um, but if you do have other things that you'd like to stay on and discuss with us, um, we are going to be sticking around until 8 o'clock this evening, and we'd be happy to discuss anything and everything that, that's on your mind. So thank you again. And just a reminder for those that are sticking around, you can uh, do the raise hand function and we'll be happy to unmute you or you can enter in any comments that you have in the chat box as well. Looks like we have a question from Evan about how accurate the growth projections in the 2011 CTP. I'm going to let Allison speak to that one a little bit because she actually had the privilege of working on that 2011 CTP and some of the growth projections that we had. Yeah, that's a good question. I have to bend my mind back toward 2011 at that point in time. Um, so we typically work with the region with Campo um, to try to understand what some of those projections are, kind of looking out from a population and employment standpoint. Um, and I think that what we've seen over the past 10 years is a fairly steady rate of growth here within the town, um, but also a, uh, a strong rate of growth. Um, so I don't have the number up in front of me. I think that we exceeded the number that was that was being talked about, but there was uh, a recognition even in 2011 that we were growing at a very strong rate at that time and we expected to see it continue. Um, so I think that one of the things that we really have the biggest opportunity to do in the new CTP is there's been a lot of projects that have been completed, a lot of things that have come online. Um, and some pretty big changes that have happened kind of within this region. So we wanted to make sure that all of those things are able to be reflected along with all the other new planning efforts that we have a chance to springboard on top of, like the land use planning efforts, uh, the parks recreation and greenway plan that Christina mentioned as well. Sean, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think you hit um, all the big points on, on the growth. Thank you. Looks like we have a question about the timeline of the planning process and that, that one year seems like a little bit of a long time and how we can speed it up some. I think um, to that point, I would love to have it done tomorrow, but I think um, to do our due diligence and really engage all of the public members and all of the stakeholders who do have, you know, pretty big stakes in the, um, in the town's transportation system, we want to make sure we get it right and talk to everyone that we can. Um, and then we want to, uh, provide some opportunities for accountability. So as we chat with you guys today and we um, go back to the drawing board and start thinking about revisiting those recommendations and what, what our proposed map for future things is, we wanna come back to you guys and let you guys tell us if we got it right, if we got it wrong, um, or, or areas that we kind of missed the mark. So I think um, that, that time frame is really important for being able to, to make sure that we get it right because um, it's been a decade since the last one. We wanna make sure that when this one's around for a decade that the town has something that's gonna be usable and something that will really help provide the right direction. Then we had a question about some of the 
the area around 540. And I think one of the things that we have the opportunity to look at in this plan, um, the town recently updated their land use and character plan. So um, that, that's been updated since the 2011 CTP. So as we start to think about what that looks like with our transportation plan now, we'll have a chance to look at those proposed land uses and some of the what that, that future development is kind of identified to be and revisit what our transportation network and those recommendations are to make sure that we have the most suitable facility in place, whether that be a thoroughfare or a collector or a more local road. Um, so definitely something that we'll be able to revisit throughout this planning process as we've got a lot newer data available to us. And I would add to that, Christina, um, in the 2011 plan development, um, actually the alternatives were still being considered for 540 at that time. Um, so there was a lot of uncertainty um, that was kind of surrounding 540 and how to plan not just for the uh, route itself, but how some of the other supporting routes were going to be impacted by it. Um, so we obviously have a much greater degree of certainty about that at this point in time. Um, so with that piece of information, plus some other regional planning efforts, um, the Southwest Area Study, some of you all may have seen or participated in some of the public outreach associated with that. Um, that was something that was done by the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization and involved Apex, Holly Springs, Fuquay, and even Anger, um, just looking at uh, look, this kind of southwestern Wake County area. Um, so that is another tool that kind of allows us to think about those connections into and out of town closer to that 540 area. Awesome. I think I saw someone called Mark raise their hand, Christina. Um, I have not seen somebody raise their hand, but Mark, if you have oh. your hand raised, we will gladly unmute you. I don't see you, though. Not sure if anyone on the project team sees that. I'm just missing it. I think it might have raised and then lowered. All right. Maybe we answered the question. Any other thoughts or points of discussion that anyone wants to chat through while you've got kind of the, the whole project team here together? Um, if, if you're all out of thoughts and all out of things to share with us, like I said, don't hesitate to take our online survey, share it with 21 of your closest friends, family, enemies. Um, all the responses we can get, the better. Um, share it with your churches on your Facebook. Um, like I said, we want every response out there that we can get. I, we saw that there's a little over 40,000 people in the town. I know I was doing some creeping and sleuthing on the town social media. There's about 6,000 people following some of those accounts. So I'm going to be a little disappointed if we don't hit those numbers. Got a new question in about whether there's a plan for diverting the traffic from the downtown area to the side roads and creating a pedestrian space for events. Um, I know Sean and Emily, we've talked that the town's planning to update their village district plan, but I, I don't know if there's any um, particular things that you guys would um, provide context or insight about that and pedestrian areas for events downtown. Yeah, so certainly pedestrian connectivity um, is very important to our, our village district, our downtown area. Um, we adopted our downtown area plan back in 2005. So that plan is a little bit dated and we are uh, beginning to have some discussions about updating that plan with all of the growth and development that we've seen in our downtown over the recent years. Um, so it's, that's definitely an interesting concept. I've, I've seen it work uh, great in some places, um, but you know, currently there isn't a plan to do that, but um, it's, it's a great idea and a great concept for us to consider as we uh, continue to make improvements to our downtown. Awesome, thank you, Sean. somebody acknowledge that the pedestrian areas are pretty popular in some of our European cities. Any other thoughts or questions? Feel free to add them into our chat window here. Raise your hand.
Christina, I'm wondering, could it be possible to maybe um, show our CTP web page and also show the public input survey and just show people uh, whoever is able to have like a video access on how to like find information from the web page and how to, you know, how the survey looks like since we have some time. Absolutely. Um, for those of you who are on your computer, I'm going to share my screen and we'll walk through how to get to the CTP website and how to navigate um, over to the CTP page. So if you guys are familiar with the town website, we've always got our, our news and announcements down here. You guys may have actually seen our CTP link was um, posted at the bottom here, kind of maybe how you guys got to us today, hopefully. Um, so um, as Emily mentioned, and as Allison's kind of walked us through, we're gonna be updating this regularly throughout the planning process. Um, so um, you can revisit it multiple times. And one of the things that um, will be on our project webpage are some different um, deliverables as we come up on them. So Allison had mentioned our virtual newsletter. Um, this is something that we'll be updating every other month throughout the planning process to let folks know what we've heard from the public, where we are, some of the outcomes of the planning process, as well as any upcoming announcements. Um, and then with that online survey, um, this, this is available through February 1st. So if you guys haven't seen it already, feel free to go visit. Um, it gives you the opportunity to, to rank your top priorities in a little bit more detail than just ranking the goals that we talked about today. And then it also allows you to provide us a little bit more context in how you navigate around town, what your typical commute looks like in a pre-COVID-19 world um, when you're getting around to work and stuff. And then um, it, it kind of steps through each of the different components that we'll be looking into as part of the CTP process um, first. So um, if you guys can see here, we've got questions about the road specifically. This is the map that I, I mentioned. Um, you guys can zoom in and you can leave us some, some comments. I'm gonna use an example one here, but we'll delete it so that I'm not putting nebulous points. Um, you'll get a little crosshair and as you zoom in, we can we can drop a pin right here at Avent Ferry and New Hill to, to let the project team know that there's there's a problem there, a safety improvement. We need to implement some intersection improvements. And then we go through that for each of the modes. So um, you can do the same thing for roads. You can do the same thing for bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. Tell us where we need some countdown signals. Tell us where we need that bike parking or um, where there might be some maintenance concerns. And then finally, you can do the same exact thing for the public transportation system. We, we ask a couple of questions to understand what destinations you're interested in accessing, reasons that you do or do not use public transportation now. Um, and then kind of the stuff that you guys stepped through with us today, understanding what you think about the vision and the goals. And then finally, just concluding it with some demographic questions so that we can understand a little bit more about the context of those who are responding to our survey. So, and then also if you're on the town social media, um, all of this has been shared via, via those platforms. So if you've, if you've been on there, you can usually pretty quickly link to them from, from the town's social media platforms and the town's main page of the website to, to access it and provide feedback to us. Any questions about how to navigate, how to get to that? Or any additional questions that you've thought of that are more general um, since the last time we kind of opened the floor? Maybe we should also mention that uh, if you know someone who would uh, be interested or needs a paper version of the survey, just let mm -hmm. us know and uh, we can make those available upon request. Uh, just email us or call us and uh, we can mail those or have them picked up in town hall as needed. That's a great point, Emily. Thank you for adding that clarification. I know we've got a lot of folks who may or may not have access to the internet or just aren't comfortable using it. We want to make sure that everyone has a chance to weigh in and provide that feedback to us in whatever means is most convenient for them.
One of the things Christina mentioned that we typically would have this in non-COVID world in person with, with masks on the table. Um, and we have the chance through our goal identification process to talk a little bit about some of the, the areas that, that may drive you crazy. Um, are there any particular places around town that folks want to kind of point out to us um, or, or kind of have questions about why it works the way that it does or why it maybe doesn't work uh, the way that it does? If we were to put a little bit of a different spin on that, any areas that you can think of either in the town or some of our neighboring communities that you think work great and you would like to see the town um, replicate or steal some ideas from? And also sometimes we also like to hear the good stuff that we are doing. <laughs> what are some of the transportation related stuff that, uh, you know, we're doing good and we should keep doing? The Cary downtown area is becoming a great place for people to visit. I definitely echo that sentiment. I am a city of Raleigh resident, but I'm right there on the line. So I've got pretty convenient access to go visit the new library or see some of the lanterns that they put out over the holidays. So definitely something that has moved um, mountains in the past little bit. Any and other I think thoughts? That's a We've seen some, some change since the last CTP in, in downtown Holly Springs as well. It, it certainly got some additional vibrancy as we've seen some of the uptick in, in businesses and really more of that um, downtown feel right around town hall. Um, but I think that's, that's a place that, that others have pointed out that is really a, a feature that we want to continue to highlight and bring pedestrian connectivity to um, from other places, some of those first and second tier neighborhoods um, that are close enough um, to have that easy walking environment. Um, and then connecting to some of the other amenities um, like some of your, your ballparks and, and other things that are, are fairly close by um, to that downtown area, just making sure that there's, there's that chance to get back and forth. Um, so some great progress and I think also some great opportunity. Any other thoughts or, or questions from the folks still left on the line? We definitely appreciate your all's time tonight um, and the great feedback that we've heard so far. Do you get a chance to mention earlier of uh, the next steps uh, that are coming up in regard to the CTP? Absolutely. So um, we hit on that, but we've had a lot of people kind of join us in a little bit late. So thinking about our next steps for the CTP, we'll be wrapping up our phase one engagement here at the end of the month, with the conclusion of our survey and wrapping up some final stakeholder interviews. Um, and as we wrap that process up, we'll really start to use that existing conditions and all of the public feedback that we've heard to, to start looking at our recommendations and what we ultimately want to um, recommend for our, our infrastructure and our network in town. Um, and as we go through that, there will be a couple of different opportunities to interact with the project team. We're looking at a couple of pop-up events between now and our next big set of public workshops and online survey. Um, and then there's also going to be a little bit of our process where we get to dive into um, a couple of what we're calling hotspots or special study areas. So we're going to take a deeper dive and look at, you know, three to four locations around town and start thinking about what, what that could look like in the future in addition to the, you know, more standard CTP or planning map that you see of what our ultimate build out will look like. So it's going to be a lot of really great um, graphics and maps for everyone to kind of sink their teeth in into and you know respond to as we get into our next phase and then as we near the end of 2021 which is kind of weird to say considering we're just now in january we'll start rolling out all of the drafts for public um, review and comment and then in the early part of 2022 we will be going to the planning board and then ultimately town council for adoption of the plan
see a comment that came in about the North Hills Mall area and how they promote live music each year and that downtown Holly Springs could leverage and host something similar to really drive folks there. I think that's a, a really great idea um, to think about ways that we get people down there and maybe we can get them to, to walk or bike and then visit some of our, our restaurants and shops and really start thinking about that economic development component too. Great feedback. Yeah, I know our Parks and Rec Department, uh, obviously before COVID, there were um, several events, especially I believe on Friday nights in our downtown area at the um, Cultural Center and Library. Um, of course, we have the Farmer's Market on, on Saturday mornings. That's a, a pretty big draw. Um, and it, it's been you know, kind of remarkable over the last couple of years. You, you see a lot more people walking and biking to the Farmer's Market and then going to Main Street to grab a cup of coffee afterwards or uh, you know, grab breakfast or something. So definitely some, some great improvements over the past couple of years uh, with pedestrian access to downtown and um, the events that are occurring there. Absolutely. Any, Any other, other questions? <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Larry, I know that you joined us a little late, um, so we are happy to give you a little bit of a taste of, of what we discussed earlier in the workshop, um, if you'd like to stick around with us. We do appreciate you joining. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, um, we actually went through a narrated presentation at the beginning of the workshop this evening. Um, that narrated presentation is going to be up and available on the town's website. It's just a quick 10 minute thing, um, which if you'd like, um, we can go ahead and play that right now if you all are up for it. Yeah, let me pull it up again. I've since closed it down so that I didn't accidentally press play in the background and start bombarding everyone's ears. So we'll just go through this quick presentation and then uh, Larry, that should give you a little bit of a background on the plan itself. Um, I realized that you missed our introduction. So I do want to just note that uh, some of the folks you've been hearing from this evening are from Kimberly Horn. So I'm Allison Fluitt. Um, and you've also heard from Christina Whitfield from Kimberly Horn and Associates. We are the consultants that are assisting the town in the preparation of the transportation plan. And uh, we are joined by Sean Ryan and Emily Timpati, um, who are town staff that are leading this effort um, from the town side to assist in the plan development. Um, but we're here at the very inception of our planning process. Um, so tonight was really one of our first efforts uh, in uh, pairing with our survey, which I think you heard Christina mention and go through a moment ago, um, to just gather as much feedback as we can about some of the vision that people have um, for the transportation plan and some of the needs that you see out there. So um, by all means, we invite you to fill out that survey or once you've gone through this narrated presentation, if you want to offer any comments or thoughts that you've had, if it spurs any anything for you, um, we'd be happy to hear it. 